I'm good at kit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I'm not as good as kit, though, because I have to write it down. <laughs> so bear with me while I, I read from it. I won't remember any, everything otherwise. So yeah, I'm Ruth. I'm Karen's twin sister. Um, and they asked me to do a speech today. I think it's because I'm the only person uh, in the family who uh, likes to sound with their own voice enough to do a speech. Um, that I was quite nervous, actually, which isn't like me. Um, so I did that thing where you have a little look on the internet and you try and find stuff, because um, I didn't know where to start. And uh, it said, just start where you met, tell a couple of embarrassing stories, and then end on some advice. So I thought, okay, I can do that. Uh, so it's simple. So where we met was inside our mother's womb. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still not really there. Um, and apparently the reason why Karen is left-handed and I'm right-handed is because we sort of lay side by side, squished, and Karen had use of her left arm and I had use of my right arm. Um, and I really love this story because it means that I physically bullied Karen into being left-handed. <laughs> Everybody knows being left-handed means... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I do like that story, though, because it's nice to think that before we were even born, we were side by side. As, oh, God. <laughs> it's too early for that. As we have been ever since. Um, even when there were sometimes thousands of miles between us. This was my first experience of what it was like to be a twin. Always having someone alongside you, standing your ground with you, and having your back in spirit, if not in physical form. So yet, yeah, we met in the womb, and Karen um, won the race down the birth canal. She <laughs> uh, she's beat me in every race ever since, which isn't hard, because the only thing I can successfully run is a back. <laughs> um, uh, it's actually completely bemusing we are twins because Carol would literally rather die than stand here and speak at an occasion like this. Um, but it's little personality traits like this that made it possible for me to torture Karen throughout childhood by confidently convincing her that she was adopted. <laughs> I was my parents' only and most loved biological child. To be fair, Karen had a lot to put up with from a lot to put up with from me in childhood. <laughs> I made her be an unwitting audience to my one woman shows. I literally forced her to be in an ABBA tribute band. I don't regret that. And I made her be Frida. We all know I constantly sang in her face. I made her listen to my magic of the musical CD on repeat. I kicked her out of the biggest bedroom when we were six into what could only be described as a large cupboard where she had to live till we were 18. <laughs> I also, I, I, I'm not proud of this story, but once we were in a swimming gala in school and I saw that she was winning, so I reached out my losing hand and grabbed hold of her swimming costume and held on tight uh, so that she wouldn't win. And she didn't make it through to the next round and I was <laughs> So. <laughs> we, we missed that <laughs> Karen's childhood with me was not easy. Oh <laughs> so the website said I had to think of some it's embarrassing so stories for this speech yes. about Karen. And every time I thought of a bone-crushingly cringy one, I would soon realise, oh no, that was me. <laughs> uh, not her. I don't really know how she put up with me, but she did. This is because Karen has a very generous spirit, something which I didn't always appreciate growing up, but I do now. Everyone could see I was the bossy twin, attention-seeking, loud, brash, too confident for my own good. But however confident I was, I think a tiny part of me has always wished I was a bit more like my sister, whose kindness, generosity of spirit, and general ability not to get on anyone's nerves made me a bit jealous. <laughs> she won't admit it, but she was super clever at school, and I was in awe of her understanding of numbers, science, and anything logical, as I pranced around the drama studio in a leotard. <laughs> <laughs> she was far braver than me in everything, and didn't seem scared of anything, except moths. <laughs> she even went to America to work by herself one summer when I thought I had been an intrepid explorer getting the train to Edinburgh by herself. <laughs> Karen looks like a cute little mouse. But for me, inside, she has always been a lion. 
She reminds me of the quote from A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is, though she be but little, she is fierce. Fiercely loyal, fiercely protective of those she loves, and a fierce defender of her beliefs and all she is passionate about. Recently, I saw a pair of tiny twin girls, and I got chatting to their mum, and I told her I was a twin too. And I told her they would have a brilliant life, because being a twin meant that you always had someone and you were never alone. This is what it has been like for me to have Karen as my twin. She has always been there, the best and most considerate sister and auntie to Caitlin and Ellen we could have wished for. Bette Midler has written her song, The Wind Beneath My Wings of Winter, because that is what Karen has always been to me, even when I had her in a headlock and I was giving her a good thrashing. <laughs> Someone she could be happy with and share a life with. And after a few tiny mini practice runs and kissing a few of them, they could have them to be the amazing Katie. And we could not be happier. This felt right. And anyone who has seen them together very quickly realised they have a lifetime of happiness ahead and they are so perfect for one another. I'm so grateful to be here today celebrating this special day. And it's great to meet Katie's family and to get to know them all too. So as we near the end of the speech, it's time for the advice part. I got to thinking about the secrets of a happy marriage and I came up with, uh, well, I wrote a poem. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> Today will be perfect in every single way, a Disney-worthy fairy tale for your wedding day. There are secrets to good marriages, there are rules to obey, but the most important rules of love are what you two do each day. It's the hey babes in the morning, it's getting out of muddles, it's talking Buffy all day long. <laughs> it's sharing Jason cuddles. <laughs> it's never forgetting to hold hands. It's, cuddle while star it's cuddles while Star Trek's on TV. It's accepting all each other's flaws. It's putting us before the me. It's facing the world as wrong. <clears throat> Not just love at first sight. It's living long and prospering. Best friends all day and night. <laughs> it's Flander and Ariel. Cogsworth and Lumiere. It's Pascal and Rapunzel. It's Piglet and Pooh Bear. It's the way you look into her eyes. It's the way she looks too. It's why we are all here today. It's why you said I do. Now my speech is over, we should raise a toast to life for Karen and for Casey, finally, as wife and wife. Aww.